This is Coomera on the Gold Coast. But did you know that there are actually two Coomeras? There's this one here with Dreamworld and the highway, and there's also Upper Coomera. So how did we end up with two Coomeras? Here's their story. So what does the name Coomera actually mean? Well, there are two theories on that. The first one is that it comes from the indigenous word Kamera, which means blood flow, the, the life-giving river supporting life around it. The second interpretation is that it is a Bundjalung word, meaning a type of wattle bark used to stupefy fish. The first recorded European in the area is said to have been Michael Caffrey, and he was on the lookout for cedar trees in the Coomera Valley. He employed some of the local indigenous people to help float the logs down the Coomera River to Moreton Bay, where he then shipped them to Sydney. However, at this time, the Coomera River was known as the Arrowsmith River. The first roads heading south from Brisbane were not about getting to the Gold Coast, just because there really wasn't anything there yet. The first roads were to get you to Sydney. Craig setting up a drone shot now. Incredible things, those drones. I have no idea how they work. I don't even know how the fridge works. So I've come to the banks of the Coomera River here. Back in the mid 19th century, this here was the only way to get across the Coomera River. So you could only cross this ford when the water level was, was lower. This crossing was known as Binstead's Crossing because Binstead was the first European family to move to this area. They were over that way, later on a road, but before that there was a ford. This is the Tambourine Oxenford Road. This was the old road from Brisbane down to northern New South Wales. That's why Coomera began here. Today we know it as Upper Coomera, but this is the original Coomera because it was on the road between Brisbane and northern New South Wales. Very steep climb, eight kilometres ahead, not suitable for trucks, buses, caravans, trailers and fords. This brings us to the Binstead family. William Binstead established a sawmill right near Queen's Wharf at what is today the new casino in Brisbane. However, they soon had competition from their neighbour, William Pettigrew, who established a steam-powered sawmill. His mill burnt down in 1855, and he seems to have blamed the Binsteads. Recognising the area's agricultural potential, the Coomera Agricultural Reserve of 15,000 acres was established in 1864, two years after the massive Logan Agricultural Reserve. 1867, and now doing well, the Binstead family settled near a ford on the Coomera River at what is now Upper Coomera. They called their property the rather unimaginative Woodlands. It was in the 1870s that the first ferry service began operation here across the Coomera River. And one of the main reasons why the ferry service was established here was because the alternate route, the original one through Upper Coomera, was very windy, it was very time consuming, narrow roads, and they still had to get across the Coomera River at the weir, and in heavy rain, that could flood and make the journey almost impossible. The name Coomera has shifted around a few times. The original Coomera was what we now call Upper Coomera. Later on, when the ferry was established here, this area became Ferry Town or Lower Coomera. So to avoid confusion, the original Coomera became Upper Coomera, and this area here was known as Lower Coomera. Many years later, the word lower was dropped and this area simply became Coomera. So when you're driving along the highway and you're coming through here, remember that this is actually the second Coomera. If you want the original Coomera, you have to go to Upper Coomera. Man, I've got a headache. In the year 1873, the Coomera Provisional School was opened somewhere near here. The School of Arts is just in front of me there. However, it was considered to be quite an awkward place for the kids to get to. It was uh, certainly in, in wet weather, it was a difficult terrain to get here. So in the following year, 1874, the school was moved down to Lower Coomera. 
And that school is still there today. It's the oldest school in Coomera. And when the news was confirmed that the school was going to be moved, the schoolmaster went into a frenzy of delight and smashed up the blackboard. Approaching Dreamworld. It's been a long time since I've been here. The land that Dreamworld occupies was originally developed in 1874 by John and Sarah Williamson. They were an English cattle raising family. They built their homestead just over there where the Gold Rush attraction would be. They named their homestead the Hollywood Cottage. Like many areas in southeast Queensland, the farmers in the Coomera area made use of South Sea Islander labour. These people, also known as Kanakas, which is an Hawaiian word meaning man and is generally considered offensive today, came primarily from New Caledonia, Vanuatu, the Solomon Islands and Papua New Guinea. Okay, John Siganto Park. John came from either Trieste in Italy or Istria, which is just over the border in what became Yugoslavia. At the time it was under Austrian rule. Anyway, he came out to Australia, jumped ship and ended up running a cargo service on the Coomera River. It is just behind me down there. He became a local businessman here and was involved in many different industries. Anyway, local identity, very, very successful. And this park is named after him. I'm at the intersection of Tambourine, Oxenford Road and Pinewood Street back in 1878. Across the road over there, that was the site of the Baker's School. It changed its name in 1880 to the Upper Coomera School and it closed in 1964. I'm trying to look up for spiders and look down for snakes. I don't think I can get through up there. I mean, I could if I was brave. Anyway, the school was up here somewhere. Quacky slime ducks. This here is the Coomera Cemetery. It was gazetted in 1881. However, burials were already taking place here long before then. In fact, somewhere in this cemetery, there is a grave to a William Wilson, and he was buried in 1867. I'll see if I can find him. And I think I've just found him. Wow. So here we are, William Wilson, born in Narsborough in Yorkshire, uh, September the 20th, 1802, died of Brisbane, April 21st, 1867. Now this is very interesting because the first recorded Europeans to settle here in the Coomera area were the Binsteads. They settled here in 1867, the year that this uh, William Wilson died. So this plot of land up here, which is the cemetery now, was already being used for burials, at least by one person. That's what, 67, 77, 77 80, 80, well, they're looking like 14 years, something. This is such an incredible little island of green, literally surrounded by highways and traffic and noise when you've got the M1 just over there. But Foxwell Road is over there. And we do have one rather illustrious resident here at the Coomera Cemetery, and that's this one here, Russell Hins. He was a prominent member of the National Party with Sir Joe back in the 70s and the 80s. Now this is most interesting. I had no idea these were here. At the northern end of the cemetery, there are Muslim graves. And there's quite a lot of them as well. I had no idea there was a Muslim community out here at Coomera. That's a columbarium. You can call them anything you want. I'm walking along Killarney Court and just ahead of me is the Coomera Lodge Hotel. The hotel was founded in 1885. Today this road here, Killarney, dead ends a little bit further up that way. But it used to go all the way 
to the original Coomera, what we now call Upper Coomera, and it went up to the Cenotaph, the World War I monument. The Coomera Hotel burnt down in 1933. I don't know when the rebuild happened. Uh, this is a much more modern building. The Upper Coomera Cemetery opened in 1885. And for some reason I'm walking backwards. Beautiful spot for a cemetery up here. Once again, it's on very high ground. I haven't found any National Party members buried here though. There do seem to be rather a lot of, I think they're Vietnamese or Thai people, a few Chinese as well. Quite a substantial part of this part of the cemetery is for them. I mean, I know in terms of religion, like you'd have the Catholics one side and the Protestants on the other. Different nationalities seem to be clustered together in these Coomera cemeteries. Do that again. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Into the camera. Keep going. There's a cockatoo. You don't know if there's a plaque for the old train station, do you? No? Not one? Okay. Well, thanks. Behind me is Heathwood Drive. And around about this spot here, on this grassy area, this used to be the site of the original Coomera train station. It was opened in 1889 and it was closed in 1964. According to the cockatoo, there's no plaque around here to show exactly where the station was. But going by the map evidence and the photos, it was around about here. The modern train line is much further to the east, that way on the other side of the M1. The War Memorial here at Upper Coomera was opened in 1918. This photo taken in 1926 shows two things. First of all, it is the road near the weir at Upper Coomera. This road was still the main road over the Coomera River between Brisbane and Southport. And secondly, the little boy is future Queensland National Party politician Russ Hins. Just up the road from the weir is the Russell Hins Park.
with the arrival of the automobile, the ferry service really wasn't up to the task to getting them all across the Coomera River. You can see in this photo here the nightmare of a traffic jam of cars waiting for their, for their ferry boat. It was certainly clear that they needed a bridge. And that there is the very first bridge over the Coomera River. It was opened on the 14th of June 1930. The first official vehicle to cross the river belonged to the Attorney General Magritte. However, local folklore says that two young men by the name of Vince and Alan Hargraves two weeks earlier rode a horse over the bridge. Just walking along this lovely little boardwalk along the Coomera River. Earlier I passed a couple of lads back that way doing some fishing and they were using worms and other sorts of bait. And I remembered that the other day I bought a can of worms, but I'm afraid to open it. So where I'm walking right now, this is the Dreamwall Parkway. This is actually a remnant of the old state highway from Brisbane to Southport. If you wanted to get from Brisbane to the Gold Coast, you had to come along this road. Walking south along the Dreamworld Parkway, ahead of me is the town of Coomera. This is the place that used to be known as Ferry Town or Lower Coomera. And it was in 1974 that John Longhurst purchased 85 hectares here along the old highway to begin construction of Dreamworld. Now the old Hollywood cottage as mentioned before was still on the site here and there was a fellow living in it. His name was Day. We have a Day's Road in the area. Get off. I don't know and nobody else seems to know the fate of that old 19th century house. It was part of the dressing, I believe, for the um, Gold Rush attraction. I think it got moved around once or twice, but the general consensus is that it was later demolished. And that's unfortunate because it really was a very important part of Coomera's early European history. I mean, I may be wrong. It may be still here, hidden away somewhere. On the 15th of December, 1981, Dreamworld was opened. The old road south from Brisbane to the Coomera Bridge is still partly in existence. It runs right past the main entrance to Dreamworld. The next part of it south has been obliterated by extensions to the park, but the road then reappears as the Dreamworld Parkway. Even as late as 2004, the old road through Dreamworld was still partly visible. And just behind this fence here you can see the old train line. There. It's now partly buried. It's, it's certainly not being used anymore, but there's the old train tracks. And just over there through the fence, you can see part of the old infrastructure for the Gold Rush uh, attraction. So this is really, really interesting. That body of water you see over there, that's part of Coomera River. However, it was never that wide originally. That whole area there from the edge of the, the, the grass that I'm standing on here, just down there, the riverbank, that land actually was all the way out into that big area of water there. That whole area out there where used to be land was cut away, bulldozed away back in the late 70s and early 80s. I think by 1982 it was well underway. Why they dredged all that land away, I have absolutely no idea. It may be something to do with flood mitigation. It may just be something to do with making a nice bigger body of water for people to sail on. Not sure, but they did exactly the same thing on the other side of the bend, just over there. They also dredged out a big bit of land over that side and created a larger body of water. I didn't capture it on camera because I was filming this way. Just over there I could see a snake slithering down towards that tree. Well, there's a new fear unlocked. That area behind me there in the distance, those tall trees, that's an area of primary woodland. As far as I can tell, that area has never been logged or chopped down. That is a remarkable wilderness survivor from really before European settlement.
I'm not going to try and get down there to the water's edge because I know I'm going to slip and fall in. In fact, I'd make a point of slipping and falling in. Koala Town Road. That means I'm on the site of where Koala Town used to be. This was a little amusement park just down the road from Dreamworld. I'm not sure when it opened. I couldn't find an opening date for it. I think it was in the 70s and I believed it closed about 2001. I'm not really sure. I couldn't find a lot of information about it. But anyway, this is where it was. Um, here's a clip from one of their TV commercials. All new Koala Town announces the best value family day out on the coast. For a record low 1950, the whole family can enjoy the amazing, incredible, never seen anything like it before American High Dive Spectacular, direct from Acapulco. All new Koala Town. If you miss it, the crocodiles will eat you. <laughs> In 1996, the new railway line came through, complete with a brand new Coomera station. And I actually have a personal connection to this place because back in 2006, I worked on the Big Brother TV show. I was a story assistant and right over there, it's gone now, that was the Big Brother production building. Further on, about another 400 metres or so, was the Big Brother house. That burnt down in 2019. I worked in the control room. Uh, sometimes I worked the day shift. They were 10-hour shifts. But often I worked the night shift as well, and I'd get home at about 6 o'clock in the morning. But I didn't mind. I liked that, that night shift, that graveyard shift, because mostly the housemates had gone to bed by midnight, 1 a.m. So it was really just a matter of keeping the control room running, keeping a, an eye on the housemates. Maybe one of the housemates would get up and go find an aspirin, or maybe they just wanted to talk to Big Brother for a few minutes. That production building is gone. The, the house is gone. And it's actually quite ironic that I'm here again now after all these years doing a YouTube video because it was while I was working at Big Brother that someone in the control room said to me, hey, have you seen this new thing called YouTube? It was in 2018 that the Westfield Coomera Shopping Centre was opened. That road behind me there is Shipper Drive. That's the scene of the soon-to-be-built or maybe even being built now, the new Coomera Connector. It's going to duplicate the M1 southbound to relieve some of the heavy traffic uh, between Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Historically, the area of Coomera, apart from the farmers and people who lived here in the 19th century, Coomera was a place that you just wanted to get through. You wanted to get past it. You wanted to get over the river to go to somewhere else, whether it was northern New South Wales or Sydney or a bit later, the Gold Coast. It wasn't really until 1981, with the opening of Dreamworld, that people started thinking that Coomera could be a destination. I mean, even Upper Coomera, the original Coomera, that was founded there because there was a way across the Coomera River at the little ford, the weir, that I visited. It was a place that you could use to get over the river and keep going. And as I say, this final piece to camera, I've noticed that just in front of me is the Tower of Terror. I think that's what it's called, a dream world. And that is very much a visual marker in the landscape that people decided that they wanted to be here and not just get through it. They weren't just building roads and bridges to get through this area. Now they wanted to build something that would draw people here. All right then, that wraps up this video. Thanks very much for watching. I had a great time making this one. I learned so much about Coomera and Upper Coomera. So many surprises on the way. If you enjoyed it, please consider hitting the like button and the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you again soon. I've arrived at the Coomera Cemetery. Now this was gazetted in 1880, I can't remember.